Good morning everyone, my name is Jade. I'm from Canada and I'm currently living in Chongqing, China and teaching English here. And I've been in China for almost four years now and I'm going to share a typical day in my life with you. If I look familiar, it's because I did one of these last year. And yeah, so if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them here. And I'm gonna head to work and share my day with you. So heading to work, I live in a community. Um, it's not finished yet, it's still being built. And I was one of the first people to move into this community last year. Now it's full, except for three buildings here. Um, and there's like 100 buildings in this complex. So usually I have to walk out of the community and then I try to find an e-bike to drive to work. So in Chongqing, you can rent these e-bikes um, by scanning a QR code, and then you can drive all over the place with them. They're very handy. So let me tell you a little bit about my job. I am working in a kindergarten this year, and every morning we get to work and we do something called morning greeting. And that's where we say hello and good morning to all of our students. So I sit at this table here, I ask the children a question and I give them a sticker and then I send them off to class. That, that right there is my class. Happy, say hi. <laughs> I think I can say with certainty that you do not need to know fluent Chinese. I don't speak Chinese very well and I spoke none when I got here, I've always been fine. Uh, Chinese people are very patient and they will always work to help you. Uh, a lot of Chinese people will work with you and work with your translator to try and figure out what you're saying and try to help you. And um, I use Yudao Translator. That's probably the best one in China. I'm not the only foreigner here who doesn't speak very good Chinese. Uh, actually, I was looking at jobs in Japan. I was learning Japanese. I was stumbling across jobs in China. The money was really lucrative, so I started applying for them, got a job here, came. Here I am, three years, four years. Yeah, there are requirements to teach in China. You have to have a bachelor's, you have to have a TEFL or teaching license, and you have to be from one of five countries. And I'll insert them here. My students have finished the curriculum and we're learning about camping right now so we're doing a coloring worksheet today every morning we do a morning exercise with the children it's too hot to go upstairs today so we're doing it outside in our hallway So between 11.30 and 12, I normally have an office hour. I usually will spend that in our teacher's office. Today I have something to do in class, so I'm just going to finish that up quickly. And this, during this time, the kids are eating their lunch. I made a campfire for my class, so I'm just painting the bottom. My kids are over there eating lunch. I don't actually have to be here during this time, though. So I thought I'd give you a little tour of my school. My school is in uh, like a complex building and we have the whole side of one of them. So this is the third floor. Uh, we have a bunch of classes up here. This is my class. I have another class downstairs on the second floor. And if we go upstairs, there is uh, there is a playground, but it's very hot up there right now because Chongqing is crazy hot and yeah, it's the roof. <laughs> so here we are on the roof. We have a beautiful view of Yubei District in Chongqing. And here's our playground. It's cute, but it's small. And we have a bunch of cars for the kids to play with as well not much to it. I also forgot to share that each class has their own little garden outside of their classroom. This is my baby classes and I planted those with the kids. The cups of flowers. Actually it's my favorite part of the school.
the finished products. So it's noon now. I've obviously already left school. Um, so usually you can eat at the school in China. Um, the school will provide you lunch, but I'm not a big fan of it. So I am gonna go out to eat, I usually do. Either I go home, I cook at home a lot, or I go to the mall. Today I'm gonna go to the mall because I have some errands to run. So you can follow me along. I'm gonna go find an e-bike. Uh, would I consider living in Beijing or Shanghai? Personally, I wouldn't. Uh, Chongqing is the biggest city I've been. I'm not a big fan. I prefer to be in smaller cities. And also, I would like to save my money. It's very expensive in those cities. With the e-bike situation in China, sometimes it just turns into a sea of bikes. Um, but here I am at the mall. Uh, this is a brand new mall in my area and it's great. Um, before this arrived, there was nothing here. This whole area has really developed very quickly. Um, last year, all of this was not even built yet and now it's built and open. Things are it's happened so fast in China. There's even another mall down there that is, I think, going to open in a couple weeks. Normally it's not so bad, but there's a global panorama happening right now, so um, it hasn't been so easy. I'll talk more about that in the next slide. So currently, I haven't been home in about two years now. I went home the summer of 2019, which is good. I got to see all of my family, which was also good and lucky because I didn't know what was about to happen. Um, so in January 2020, we all know what happened. I went on vacation and I got stuck in Myanmar for two months before I was able to come back. I came back a few days, like four days before the borders closed. And I've been here ever since. <laughs> Um, I'm vaccinated now and I was hoping that would make things easier for us to go home this summer but unfortunately the borders are still closed maybe next year well I have to go home next year so fingers crossed one of the most uncomfortable things for me was how much people stare take pictures and videos of you I'm still not used to it four years later but I like China otherwise I've traveled a lot in my life and usually I adjust pretty quickly so um, it takes a day or two I just sleep a lot I sleep until I'm on the right time oh, hello to my fellow Canadian um, yeah ITA is for everyone there are people from all over the world in my class and uh, you can actually take in-person classes all over the world so look into it or you can do it online I've made lots of friends in my time in China. You can befriend your co-workers, your Chinese co-workers who speak English, or your foreign co-workers. Um, or you can befriend people on Instagram. That's worked really well for me. Also, if you're in a city with a good expat community, there'll be lots of expat events that you can go to, expat groups you can join on Facebook, on WeChat. So, it's easy. I can only speak for China because I hear it's very different in places like Japan and South Korea. I do have some visible tattoos. I have a piercing. I've got tattoos on my feet as well. Not a problem. Not in China. Also, um, although usually they're not visible tattoos, most Chinese people do have tattoos as well. Um, maybe older people have a stigma about it, but younger people don't care. I thought I'd give you a quick peek inside the mall. Chinese malls are enormous and they're very modern. There's Sephora, there's a Starbucks, everything you need is here. This is how fast the weather can change in Chongqing. It just started pouring. I was gonna go out and share a little bit of Chongqing with you, but it's crazy pouring and thunder and lightning outside. So I'm, instead I'm going to go home and share my part with you guys. It's calmed down a lot, but there's a big traffic jam outside of my school. And all of the kids are still at school waiting out the rain. There's about an inch of water on the road. It's part of the fun of Chongqing, you never know what's going to happen with the weather. This wasn't in the forecast. 
So this is where I live. It is a gated community, but the guard knows me, so he'll just open the door for me. Inside, it's really lush and green. And this is our clubhouse where the swimming pool is, that <laughs> the swimming pool that is never full. <laughs> and also we have a gym there, a little convenience store, all kinds of things. Someone obviously left their rug out here to dry and it started to rain. It's kind of like a little jungle in here. Yeah, so we have swimming pools, but they've never been full and they look a little decrepit. We do have an indoor pool, but it's just basically for swimming laps. So in China, you have to get your water from somewhere because the water from the tap isn't potable. I get my water from this machine. It's a water dispensing machine. You basically get a card, you fill it with money, and then you can bring your card and your bottle here and fill your bottle up. I don't have my water card with me, but this is what the machine looks like. You scan your card here and then you put your bottle in here. Uh, you press the green button, water comes out, and when your bottle is full, you press the red button. And at the beginning of the year, I paid like 400 RMB for to fill up my card with water and um, I still have 280 RMB on it so yeah it's super cheap to drink water here so this is my building obviously it's a big apartment building beside it we've got the garbage cans and some clothing recycling and donation bins and a lot of really tacky statues. So here is the apartment entrance, but I don't need to use it because my apartment is outside. I have my own entrance. Um, obviously, I'm a very smart girl who put her clothes out to dry today. So um, I'm gonna take care of that, tidy my house, and I'll share that with you. So I'm ready to give you that apartment tour, but before I do, I just wanna give you a little disclaimer. I am moving. In 11 or 12 days, I'm leaving Chongqing. I'm not going home to Canada. I'm going to a city called Hefei to work at a Canadian, Canadian international school. Um, so what that means is I am packing. My house is a little bit crazy. There's dishes in the sink because my life is a little bit crazy right now. Please bear with me, but I think you'll get a good idea of what a Chinese apartment might look like. So this is the view from my walkway and this is my door. This is my granny carriage that I carry my groceries home in. So let's go in. So this is my living room. Um, so what came with the apartment was this entertainment stand, the coffee table, and the couch and the fridge and there is also a shoe cupboard over here everything else is mine um, there is nothing on this wall I realize it looks really plain it's because I have a projector um, I don't have a lot of storage space in this apartment so I do have all of my suitcases and cat carrier on top of my fridge uh, Eric and and a beautiful chandelier. I think that is also standard in China. Um, this is my big window. I usually close the curtains because people can see in from the, the streets and they do look in. I've got a big mirror. I've got a lot of shoes because this is also full of shoes. And I had, I had like a, a coat tree, but it kept falling apart. So I just put them on the wall. Um, those are some gifts for my students. Yeah, so fridge, you might notice it's marble. It's because it was really dirty and gross, so I just covered it up with contact paper. 
don't mind my tacky butterflies. And this is my kitchen. Uh, but there's somebody on the counter who shouldn't be. Yeah, so I have a hop with two burners, which is a treat. Um, the microwave is my own, and the oven is also my own. This is how I dispense water. And this tent right here is for laundry, because you don't have laundry dryers in China, so this is some kind of contraption that dries the laundry. Uh, boxes and bubble wrap. And then I have a hallway here, which is filled with a packing that's happening. Um, and this is a picture I really like that I got in Chengdu. So going on the hallway past the picture, you get to my bathroom. I think my bathroom is just fine. I've got a Western toilet. I have a toilet roll dispenser, which is my first time in China. And a decent sized shower. Obviously it's big enough that I can sit down. And I've got a big mirror that is also a cabinet. Sink and a little storage space underneath as well. Don't mind the kitty litter box. And last but not least, this is my bedroom. It is very small. The bed goes wall to wall, but it's kind of cozy. Um, I do hate that it doesn't have an armoire. So this is my clothing hanging options. Um, but So I think it's time that we wrap this thing up because I'm losing my voice now. Uh, but thank you so much for being so kind and asking so many questions today. I hope you enjoyed seeing a typical day in my life as an English teacher in Chongqing. If you have any other questions, please follow my Instagram or ask me a question there and I'll try to get back to you with an answer. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much for watching today and goodbye. Or Zai Jian.